Kepler's laws of planetary motion are amongst the most rigorously confirmed principles in astronomy. These laws are not just historical curiosities. They are mathematically precise, consistent with Newton's laws of gravitation, and verified continuously by modern space missions. In short, they're not theoretical guesses, they're proven descriptions of how celestial mechanics actually work. So when the Globusters try to tell us that they don't work, it was a video waiting to be made. Hello all and welcome along to another episode of Flat Earth Friday with me, Simon Dan. Thanks very much for joining me. Right then, before we begin with today's video, a huge thank you to the sponsors today, Incogni. Now, the number of data breaches worldwide rises every year. According to the annual data breach report by the Identity Theft Resource Centre, it went up by 72% in 2023 compared to previous years. This means that you and your loved ones are at a constantly increasing risk of data breaches, as a growing list of data brokers holds your personal information. Now, whilst you can ask those data brokers to delete that information, the process takes hundreds of hours to do manually and requires repetition and that is why you need Incogni. Now Incogni reaches out to data brokers on your behalf, requests your personal data removal and then handles any objections from their side and the whole process is automated. They also take care that your data stays off the market by conducting repeated removals and that's what makes their yearly subscription especially advantageous and you can protect your loved ones too with the families and friends plan. You can add up to four members to your subscription meaning they benefit from the exact same service that you do. I've been using Incogni for almost two years Years now and the last report I got I had hundred and fifty two requests for data removal hundred and fifty two and it saved me hundred fourteen hours of work and now introduced in custom removals on Incogni Unlimited plan now if you try googling yourself full name city and state for example you'll be shocked at how many sites publicly share your private information but Incogni's custom removals can put a stop to that you simply point them to where your data is being exposed and Incogni's privacy experts will handle the rest just give Incogni the a link to a website that's sharing your information and then watch it disappear. Take your personal data back with Incogni, use the code at the link below and get 60% off an annual plan. That's at incogni.com slash Simandan. Right, on with today's video then, which comes from the Globebusters. Brand spanking new Globebuster Kyle Adams is introducing this one and they're going after Kepler's laws, so I'm not very happy about that. Here we go. To qualify as proof, something needs to be exclusive. If you have two different possibilities, then you don't really have proof between one or the other. That's not how proof works in science. Scientific proof isn't about exclusivity between two options. It's about which model best explains all observable evidence with accuracy and consistency. In science, you don't need only one possible explanation. You need the one that actually works when tested. So straight away, your definition of proof is not correct. So I just typed in Google proofs of heliocentrism. And I have this thing called Search Labs AI Overview, which I do find to be very useful, certainly when I'm trying to kind of get a quick summary of the official position. And it provides the supportive links. Let's start with this idea here of Kepler's laws. This is like the number one that we get, right? It's the idea that, well, we know that the Earth moves around the sun because we can map out all the planets. And that's what Kepler did, and that's called kinematics. Right, and there's nothing just kinematic about Kepler's laws. They weren't random fits to data. They were a precise mathematical description of how planets move. What's more, they made predictions, which were later explained why they work by Newton's laws of gravitation, the actual physics behind the motion. So, really simply, kinematics are how bodies move in relation to each other. You know, Austin walks around the pole. Austin moves his finger around the mic, whatever it is. It's, it's in a circle around, and you could geometrically describe it. You can measure it. You can measure motion. It's about moving variables, but it's just basically taking notes of what is seen in terms of how things move. Now this is only half the story. Yes, of course, kinematics describes motion, but Kepler's laws were far more than just someone taking notes. They revealed precise mathematical relationships in planetary motion that could only make sense if the planets were orbiting the sun. For instance, Kepler's third law. 
The square of a planet's orbital period is proportional to the cube of its distance to the Sun. Now that wasn't just an observation, it was a universal pattern that no geocentric model could reproduce. Later, Newton showed why that pattern exists. Gravity acts as an inverse square law force, perfectly explaining Kepler's findings. That's called kinematics. How bodies move in relation to each other has nothing to do with forces, has nothing to do with why or how the thing is moving. It's just describing that it moves. Okay. So Kepler's laws are just kinematics. They're just geometry. It's literally just mapping out the way that the planets appear to move from the Earth. That's all it is. That is completely wrong. Kepler's laws weren't based on how planets appear to move from Earth. They were derived from heliocentric data, showing how planets move around the Sun. Kepler used Tycho Brahe's meticulous measurements to find that planets don't trace circles or epicycles as the geocentric model demanded. They move in ellipses with the Sun as one focus. That realization instantly broke every single geocentric assumption. In other words, Kepler's laws weren't just geometry. They were the first accurate map of the real solar system, something that the flat Earth or geocentric models have never been able to produce. And we discovered that they, like, if you're able to, uh, there's this reoccurring relationship between them all, and Kepler's laws works to describe that that geometry. And even in the mainstream model right now of the heliocentric globe, that would work exactly the same if the Earth were in the center, not moving. No, Kepler's laws do not work if Earth is stationary at the center. In the geocentric model, the other planets would have to move in wildly complicated paths, looping backward and then forward, retrograde motion, with constantly changing speeds. Kepler's laws describe smooth, predictable ellipses around the sun. If you put Earth at the center of that, those ellipses instantly fall apart. What is he talking about here? We can actually measure this as well, by the way. Radar ranging, parallax of the planets, and spacecraft navigation all show that the sun is near the center of the planetary motions. It's kind of a glass half empty and half full situation. Either way you describe it, you're observing the same thing. So why would Kepler's laws be on this list? Why would Kepler's laws be on these mainstream articles claiming to prove it, right? Like, here we go, Kepler and Newton right here. Like, why? Because it's objectively not the case. Is it not more likely that Kepler's laws do conform to heliocentricity and that you just don't understand them? Let's think about this really clearly. Either the Earth is flat and at the center of everything, and Kepler's laws work on both a flat and globe Earth model, despite being put forward as proof of a heliocentric solar system, or you don't understand Kepler's laws. I know which one I would vote for. They don't want to leave you with nothing, so they give you some fancy terminology to make it sound like you might have an answer. But it's a facade. It isn't a valid answer. And when you know their terminology, you know they're feeding you crap. Once you know what's in it, you don't want to eat it. Classic deflection. When the evidence is too strong, attack the vocabulary. But scientific terms aren't there to sound fancy. They exist because the universe is complex and precision matters. So no, it's not terminology to trick you. It's a shared language for describing the universe accurately. It's like Brian Cox's bowling ball on the feather. If you drop the bowling ball, is it moving? Or is it the earth that is rising up to the ball? It's all about your frame of reference. Kinematics can describe it either way. It doesn't prove one way or the other. That is a neat thought experiment, yes, but it misses the key point. Physics doesn't stop at just, it looks the same either way. Sure, kinematically speaking, you could say that earth rises to meet the bowling ball, or that the ball falls to earth. But once you include forces and energy, only one explanation fits reality. Gravity accelerates both objects towards their shared center of mass. And because the Earth's mass is enormous, the Earth's motion is negligible here. Right. And so I hope everyone understands that. It's, re it's really simple. Everyone understands the idea of uh, relative motion. And to quote Einstein, the struggle so violent in the days of Copernicus, between Copernicus and Ptolemy, um, which is obviously heliocentrism and geocentrism, was quite meaningless. It's just based on a coordinate system. Whether it is the Earth that is moving or the ball that is moving. Kinematically speaking, you're observing the same thing as the two draw closer to each other.
and the two statements uh, the sun moves around the earth and the earth is still or the sun is at rest and the earth moves around the sun are equally valid. They're, they mean the same thing. It's just, just a coordinate system preference. That quote is favorable for people trying to twist relativity into geocentrism, but they always leave out what Einstein actually meant. He wasn't saying that geocentrism and heliocentrism are basically identical. He meant that mathematically, you can describe motion from any chosen frame of reference. You can say the sun goes around the earth if you're willing to make all the math absurdly complex and introduce fictitious forces everywhere. The equivalence principle. It's like if we think about this very simply, what when you say, hey, do you have any exclusive evidence that the earth moves around the sun? Do you have any proof of the heliocentric model? What they will say is something like the, the Kepler's laws or the movement of planets. So what you're saying is the proof that Earth is moving through space is that we see other things moving in the sky. <laughs> How does that make... Do you, there's, no, there's no way you don't understand that that's illogical. That isn't proof. Except it is, because the motion of other planets isn't random dots in the sky. It follows precise testable patterns that only make sense if the Earth's moving too. With geocentrism, Mars's retrograde loops, Venus's phases, and Mercury's speed make absolutely no geometric sense. Kepler's heliocentric model solved all of that instantly. Every planet's motion fell into perfect mathematical order. And as I said, later Newton explained why with gravity. We've since confirmed it a thousand different ways. Stellar parallax proves Earth moves relative to nearby stars. Doppler shift shows how we orbit the sun at 30 kilometers a second. Even spacecraft navigation depends on this motion. So yes, we do see other things moving, but we also measure and predict and use that motion with mathematical precision that would be impossible if the Earth were still. The fact that everything in the solar system behaves as the heliocentric model predicts is the proof. My word, that was a big bag of misunderstanding from the Globusters, wasn't it? I've had enough of them today, so I'm going to wrap this one up for another video. Please do let me know in the comments below what you thought, as I say, we're all done and dusted for another one. Thanks so much for watching today. As ever, it's appreciated. If you enjoyed it, please do consider subscribing to the channel and hitting the thumbs up button too. Just enough time to once again thank Incogni for sponsoring today's video. Take your personal data back with Incogni. Use the code at the link below and get 60% off the annual plan. That's at incogni.com slash Simandan. I've been Simon Dan, have yourselves a great day and I'll see you tomorrow for another Saturday session. See you then.